know, healthcare is changing dramatically, and we at Shore Regional Health are trying to stay ahead of the curve. And it's very important for us to take time out and listen to our community. And that's exactly what our intent is to do tonight. We want to make sure that the services that we provide, either physician services or, or, or uh, other services that we offer, are, are important and essential to the communities that we serve. So much so that I know there's been a lot of discussion and a lot of talk lately about kind of what is our commitment to Kent County and specifically to the Chestertown and surrounding communities with regard to the hospital. And one of the things we've committed to and put in writing is that we commit to keep Chestertown as an acute care facility, an acute care hospital, for the next six years through March of 2022. And that's an important step because that helps us plan, it helps us strategize for our future, and it helps us ensure that we're focusing on the right things to keep the hospital viable. In addition to that statement and that commitment and pledge, we have also done some things in the very recent uh, uh, past to try to help facilitate discussions and conversations between key physicians who work at our hospital and me and my administrative team. We've created a council where a number of physicians, and I see many of them in this room this evening, are part of that council, and we sit down and we talk about the specific items that they believe are essential to keeping Chestertown's hospital viable. That council has started to meet, and we're working through some of the prioritized issues that they've identified. And that's a commitment that we're making as an organization to work collaboratively with our physicians. One example of something that we're working on immediately was, is the designation of an executive director for Chestertown's hospital. This person's sole purpose will be to help represent Chestertown as part of the Shore Regional Health team and live and work in Chestertown so that we can get first-hand knowledge of the community in this Some other needs that the physicians came up with that we completely agree with is to, to talk about specialists, talk about recruitment of physicians and allied practice professionals in our community. While we all recognize it's getting tougher and tougher each year to do that with our aging physician population and with um, uh, the fact that there just aren't as many physicians being graduated from, from medical school these days, we still need to make a commitment to identify what our need is and, and work collaboratively together to help uh, fill that need. So we're taking strides like that that are really important to us, to our physicians, to our community, to work collaboratively to try to address many of these challenges. And we're going to work together to make that happen. This isn't a one-month meeting and it's over. This is a continued commitment to work collaboratively to do that. So in addition to those things that we're working on, the commitment for six years, the commitment to have our, our groups open dialogue and, and collaborate together to improve, we also want to hear from you tonight. My name is Bill Lowe. I'm a resident of Chestertown. Uh, before I begin, I'd like to thank the Ken Fizel and the board members for giving me an opportunity to uh, spend a couple of minutes of, uh, and an opportunity to talk. As background, uh, my wife and I uh, discovered Chestertown in 1999. Uh, we immediately fell in love with the place, the historical district, and we were drawn to the town by the both the old college and the hospital nearby. Uh, and it really became, those two factors, the college and the hospital, became the primary reasons we decided to move here. So we bought property in 2000. It took us another eight years to actually relocate from Los Angeles, California. Uh, two years ago, a, a good friend of mine, living in Chestertown, had pain in his abdomen and his wife discovered blood in the toilet from his urine. Thank God she made him go to the local hospital, and thank God we still had the hospital. The doctor diagnosed his condition as acute appendicitis and required an emergency appendectomy. My friend is as healthy as can be now, but the doctor told him he would have died if he had traveled to the hospital in either Easton or Annapolis. Having a small college and a local hospital plays a vital role in the success of Washington College. Parents decide where to send their children to college based on many factors, including excellent health care. The fact that the college is adjacent to the hospital gives the parents comfort. If the hospital stops providing poor services, 
Some of these parents would send their children to different colleges where health care is readily available. Washington, as Washington College would suffer from closing hospital, local restaurants and shops would also suffer. Cultural opportunities would decline. Fewer retirees like myself and others in this room would choose to buy homes here, move here, and spend their money here. There would be a domino effect harming all of Kent County. My name is Jane Buchel. Um, I was formerly on the board of the Old Chester River Hospital. Nice old Chester River Hospital. And also the Hospital Foundation and presently I serve as an in-house volunteer every Monday morning. Let me put my glasses on. Uh, when I helped work with Shore Health on the regional process, I felt assured that this approach would benefit the entire area of Kent County, as well as all the other counties in the Lower Eastern Shore. However, it is rapidly becoming evident to me that the system is now returning to the model of most services being provided in an urban area, requiring those people who live in rural areas to travel to that hub eastern. I had hoped that you would ensure that scheduling, which you centralized in Houston for economic efficiency, would have individuals trained in understanding the services provided at the Chester River Hospital Center, as well as in Dorchester. Instead, those who work in that scheduling hub seem to not ask people where they live so that test exams could be scheduled closer to their home. For many of us, we can state that we want to have our appointments take place here in Chester County at the hospital. But for people new to the area, or older folks, of whom we have an increasingly large population over 65, they may not know what is available here. I would suggest that the Eastern administrators responsible for establishing the protocol and training of the schedulers ensure that people who work in that capacity provide appointments closest to the patient's home area. Uh, my name is Ed Fry, and uh, I was serving on the uh, board at the hospital in Chestertown. I served on the merger committee when we made a decision to merge. That was a year. I also served a year after the merger took place on a facilitation committee that uh, the administration had implemented to try to smooth out the administration. From the very beginning, we were promised that we would have full-time administration in Chestertown. And we had an administrator who was handpicked and was acceptable to the board in Chestertown, who took a two-week vacation the day the merger started, had a health problem, and never served a day as executive in Chestertown. And it's been three years and just tonight, for the first time, I heard Ken say we are going to have a full-time administrator. And that administrator was also the recruiter for the hospital. And I trust, I don't trust, I hope our new administrator. <laughs> Uh, having served on these boards, uh, really there's, there's two things that drive the decisions on the shore board. And one, obviously, is financial. And the thing that is most important is market share. And if everybody in this room said that they were going to go to Anne Arundel or Union Memorial Hospital and did it, that would have more effect on what's happening in Chestertown than the fact that we don't have an endocrinologist available. And the other thing that has been a problem is that when we talked to merger and the merger took place, transportation, 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 that's always been an issue. The hospital has spent many hours trying to come up with a solution, but there is no solution at this time. And I think that is the other key point that people in this community have is a lack of ready public transportation that's affordable to get services in Easton. Ladies and gentlemen, Delegate Jay Jacobs, our uh, president delegate here in Kent County, and uh, we got out of session midnight Monday night, and uh, thought we would come in and just give you a brief rundown of what did occur. We, uh, 
on behalf of the delegation, we spent the entire session working on your behalf to make sure this hospital stayed open. Uh, it's been a real bipartisan effort in, in Annapolis to really accomplish some great things and uh, to put together a study group that will be setting a model for the country. That's what we're getting ready to do here. And uh, it has uh, half a million dollars in funding, so you know it's not going to be a little quick study. It's going to be very comprehensive. And, uh, uh, you know, we're really looking forward to, to really taking care of what we're here tonight. You know? Hi, my name is Joe Miller. I really just have a question for Mr. Cazell. Mr. Cazell, I have a question. When you introduced yourself earlier this evening, you said that there was a commitment made that Chestertown Hospital, hospital would be an acute care hospital for six years. That's what the commitment. I'd like your definition of an acute care hospital. The definition of uh, our acute care facility is a facility like Chestertown today. It's got an emergency department 24-7. It's got inpatient beds. It's got observation beds, and it's got the services that are needed to support those patients who are, who are admitted in those beds. I'm Saint Carter, and I live nearby in Lord. And I'm not here to talk for myself. I'm here to talk, or we talk about transportation on some of this, and they have probably mentioned it too. And I'm here to talk for a group that's not here tonight. People who had trouble getting to this meeting are the same ones who have trouble getting to the hospital. I want to point out. So I volunteer a lot with schools and I've been surprised at how many kids grow up in single parent families around here. And it's 37.9%. So think about it. If their parent, the only driver in that family, is put in a hospital in Easton, and they can't walk there or bike there or hitch a ride with the neighbor, what are we going to do? I think it is outrageous if Maryland would allow that to happen to the youth in our community. My name is Nancy Robson. I've lived in the county for zero years, 40. I had both children here, one of whom was an emergency C-section in the middle of a blizzard. If I had not been able to drive, it would only take me 15 minutes to get from our home to the hospital here, where our doctor was. Two surgeons, thank you very much, Maria. <laughs> I'm not sure I'd still, I'd have this beautiful daughter who is right now at sea, the second mate on the petroleum tanker. It took us 40 minutes. I had had my water broken in Galena through a snowstorm to get down to have a baby. It wouldn't have happened if I had to go to Easton. I worry so much about the next generation. We can't, and, and the guy that just said, the county doesn't grow. When we moved here, there were 16,000 people in this county. There had been a constant 16,000 people in this county for 200 years. There are 19 and a half thousand, I believe, now. Part of that has to do with the hospital and the college and the fact that the hospital is an economic engine and will draw more young people here and it's 